Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm very glad that you clicked because today I'm going to talk about an important topic, a nail separation that's called onycholysis. It can happen to anyone and even if you're not dealing with this right now, it's good to be aware of this condition, how it happens and why it happens and learn how to treat it before it gets worse because if left untreated, it can become permanent. One of our viewers is dealing with this issue right now and I had that happen to me as well. So I'm going to explain what worked for me as well. Welcome to NS Nail Advice, a series where you guys send me pictures of your troubled nails and I try to figure out what's going on with your nails and try to help you to make them better. So here's what she writes. Back in September, so that's a couple months ago. I bumped my thumb and the nail has lifted. I was on a trip and I was wearing gel polish, so I wasn't able to see the injury to my nail until a few days afterwards. At first, the lifting looked like a white roundish spot. I think it has spread a bit and I didn't take a picture at first because I thought it would heal quickly. I have filed the nail very short and decided to stop wearing polish. I do my manicure myself once a week with a regular polish. I also apply rubbing alcohol under the nail. Do you have any additional advice? What was your experience like? I've heard I should cut all the lifted part of the nail, but I want to avoid doing this as much as possible. So the technical term for this situation is called onycholysis, which means, so this is not a name of a disease, it's a condition. It just means that the nail plate is separated from the nail bed. Like I said before, it's a pretty common problem it can be sign of skin disease or an infection or a result of injury. But in most cases, these issues are seen in women with long nails. And I also see it on the feet. And I see that a lot because I do a lot of pedicures. In case of long or longer nails, what happens is the nail acts like a lever. So it's prying the nail away from the skin. And if there was a small injury, small trauma to the nail, that pressure is preventing this area from healing. On feet, it happens very often due to trauma, like stabbing your toenail. But very often it happens due to the shoes being too tight or just shoes generally squeezing the toes together and that pushes on the nail plate and eventually that micro trauma causes the nail to separate. It often happens because of local irritation and that might be from, for example, in my case. So what happened to me is I was wearing gel at the time and I had a little crack, right? So this happened on my nails exactly in the same area. So I had a little crack, I picked off the gel and the nail has underneath separated. So first, excessive filing, like I mentioned. Number two, chemical overexposure. And that happens when people do very often manicures with, with gels, with builder gels. And this happens because some of the ingredients that are used in those products that help with the bonding of the product to the natural nail plate. I mean, we all want the product to bond properly, but sadly, these ingredients can be very irritating, especially nowadays they are contained in the products in pretty high amounts. So that causes irritation or allergy very, very quickly. So we see that a lot lately. It can happen due to allergic contact dermatitis. Two, for example, a nail hardener, and I talk about it a lot. So for example, nail hardeners like formalin are great to harden the nails, but they also can be very irritating to the skin. So this is why I do not absolutely do not recommend any hardeners, or especially the ones with formalin, to be used on damaged nail. Because when the nail is damaged, it's it's over filed, the skin is exposed. So the nail is very, very thin. So when you put a lot of that product on the nail, it's going to seep into the skin underneath. And and it can really irritate that skin and it can cause this type of separation. It can also happen as a result of irritation to nail adhesives as well, the adhesive that is used to glue the tips on, and even can be seen because of prolonged contact with water. Now, Onycholysis can happen due to fungal infection and psoriasis. So these diseases can cause onycholysis. Usually it's very difficult to tell by looking at it. If it's a fungal infection or if it's psoriasis, so normally the doctor will take a sample and they have to check for fungus. Some medications, like some antibiotics or even naproxen, for example, they can make a person have abnormal sensitivity to light. You can get a sunburn under the nails. 
which can cause onycholysis. It can be a sign of iron deficiency or a thyroid overactivity, but this is rare and in that case, usually all the nails are affected. Now, the problem is that that lifted area, once it happens, it creates a perfect environment for bacteria or yeast to grow, especially if the nail is polished. Polish raises the moisture level in the nail plate and under the nails as well and the gel polish and builder gels and things like that even more so so that's a problem if the nail is polished with a dark polish or gel polish the area underneath the nail is dark so dark and damp area is a perfect environment for certain bacteria to grow and very often and this is actually one of the reasons why i really dislike using gel polish on toes because if that happens people sometimes don't take the gel polish off because it lasts so well for months believe it or not so sometimes two or even three months later and they go to take the product off and all of a sudden you see that half the nail sometimes is completely separated and it's green or even black so it's it's infected badly uh, with the nail polish you it usually starts chipping which i know it's annoying but at least then you take it off and see the condition of the nail underneath i really do suggest doing pedicures on a regular basis and not leaving nail polish on for too long so checking the condition of your natural nails is very important every i would say two three weeks ideally i know clients go a little bit longer but going too long between pedicures is not a good idea now generally if the infection or if the area underneath the nail looks yellow, it starts going kind of yellow to green to even black. That usually means that it's a bacterial infection. And if it's white, it's usually a yeast infection, but again, it's good to have that checked. And the green infection, the, the yellow to green to black, it's usually called by bacteria that's called Pseudomona aeruginosa. It's difficult to pronounce. So this type of bacteria is common in wet environments, for example, jacuzzi, Believe it or not, contact lens solutions, sinks, bath sponges, it's even present in the soil outside. So gardeners often get this because of working with plants. Our nails have protection built in naturally from bacteria and any pathogen entering the space underneath the nail. And there are two seals around the nails. One is called hyponychium and the other one is called cuticle. So both are seals. If they're broken, pathogens can enter and create a problem. So the cuticle, and I very often talk about it, the cuticle forms an important seal between the proximal nail fold and the nail plate. And that seal prevents infectious organisms from getting underneath the skin to infect the matrix or a bone. And hyponychium also seals the nail plate and the nail bed from the other, from the opposite end of the nail. So if there is an infection, so if the nail starts turning colors, you have to deal with that infection before the nail will reattach. Otherwise, if there is an infection, the nail is not going to reattach. And it's good to do this sooner than later because if the nail sustains a lot of damage, it might be permanently deformed. Now, how do we fix it? Unfortunately, very sadly, all the unattached nail has to be clipped off and the hand should be kept out of water, so kept dry as much as possible. It's usually suggested to use gloves when cleaning and washing, but make sure that your hands don't sweat in those gloves because then you still have water exposure. So usually using cotton gloves underneath the other gloves is a good idea. It is very important to avoid mechanical cleaning under the nails. So it's very important not to start digging and trying to clean the nail underneath. That causes more trauma to the nail and the nail can lift even further. Sometimes you can get 3% thymol, mixed with alcohol solution prescribed by a doctor you have to ask a dermatologist and you can then drop that solution on that area after washing your hands or after a shower after getting your hands wet to make sure that that area is dry and you have to keep doing this until the nail gets better and i would even do it a little bit after that so if there is a color change in that area underneath the nail that indicates that there is a bacteria usually that happens the color changes from yellow to green to even black. Removing that portion of the nail is necessary and then using topical antibiotic, usually a prescription, and even a solution of chlorine to water. So it's usually one part of uh, chlorine to four parts of water and just putting a drop on that in that area. And even vinegar apparently helps. If the infection gets bad enough, sadly, sometimes the nail has to be removed and you have to um, get an oral antibiotic prescribed. The trimming of the nail has to be done on a, on a regular basis. And I found that 
the nail, for example, would grow one millimeter, but it would reattach only like one third. So it is important to keep that nail short on a regular basis. So it's not going to grow in right away. Usually, very sadly, it takes months for it to grow in. It did take, I would say, at least four or five months for my nail to grow in completely. So as it grows a little bit, the white part, so the detached part has to be clipped off. And as the nail is growing, so that has to be done on a regular basis, sometimes every couple of days, depending on how fast the nail grows. Now, usually a nail that has a damage damaged nail grows a little bit quicker so you'll see a little bit more growth but you want to make sure that you always remove that grown out part and eventually the reattached part is going to get longer and longer and that's how this reattaches so with this viewer for her it happened due to a trauma that initially she didn't even notice it's usually not even that painful but that seal probably was broken and then the nail has separated. So it's probably not what you want to hear, but this method has worked for me really well. The nail, like I mentioned, took a few months to grow out and the nail looked ugly. It was on my thumb in exactly the same area, but eventually it grew out and I tried. I tried not to cut it out and I tried to keep it dry and I kept it like this for probably two, three months as well. And eventually the area started going yellow and a little bit green and then I knew that it just has to be cut out and now my nail looks perfectly normal so guys i hope this video was helpful let me know if you have the same problem or you've had the same problem in the past and let me know how that turned out for you thank you so much for watching see you soon bye